with other religions through versus Christianity, other religions, like you said, they do good works. They do works in their way. God recognized that That's, you can't ever do that. So what he did is he gave his son and he got was simple as that. Um, why do y'all think it's important? How, how do you think, why do you think it's important to share that news? Does that, or how does that make you feel knowing that we don't have to work up to heaven? Does that make you feel like that would be easier? Versus doing works? How do y'all feel about that? Y'all look tired today. Oh, how late did y'all stay out last night, man? <laughs> y'all looking at me like, y'all sleepy. Uh, so, for me personally, hearing that, it makes it seem like, oh, so I just have to, I don't have to work for you. It's almost like this. It's almost like going to, going to a job or going to school and you sit in class and you listen to the teacher. And the teacher's giving you, okay, here's 100 just for sitting there listening and being attentive. Versus you having to do homework, having to do tests, having to do this, having to do that, having to stay after class, having to do tutorials just to get a, a grade, like a chance. So that's 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 an easier way for y'all, because I know a lot of y'all in school still to understand, or actually all y'all in school still to understand. Christianity, God gave us the one, he gave us the one thing, the one thing that we need right here, because he knows there's nothing we can do. He knows we're gonna go to struggle. We still, we still do struggle. There's still things in the Bible that we should do, but we don't have to work up to that goal. And that's what separates Christianity from other religions. And just being the, what does it mean to y'all to be saved, free? What does that mean to y'all? Does it mean, oh, uh, you, you raise your hand or you stretch your stretch? I think you're raising your hand there, girl. I think you're raising your hand. So, uh, <laughs> what, do you, what does it mean to y'all to be free, saved from the world? What does that mean to y'all? Anybody? Because I know a lot of y'all are. What, what is the purpose of being saved? Come on now, why are y'all looking up y'all looking up in the in the sky with your eyes up like don't look at me, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Come on, I'll choose y'all, I'll start choosing y'all. I got you. I guess the purpose is like to give your life to God, kind of or get closer to him. So it's easier for you to like not not easy for you to get your way up there, but so you have like a closer relationship with him. And really know what it means to be a Christian. Just complete yourself. She, she said, you get a closer relationship to recognize that you need them. I don't know about y'all. How many of y'all have good relationships with people and bad relationships with people? Everybody. everybody you see, that one got everybody's attention, right? So, um, doesn't it feel more tiring or tiresome slash? Just more draining with a bad relationship to have to be with that person, or to like have to help them or some kind of have not resentment, but like it's just more draining. It takes a little bit more effort to, you know, uh, man, you cheated me last time, or every time I hang out with you, you always do me wrong. But you know, you need help here, I help you. It's a little harder to do that versus your best friend is always there for you. Uh, so having that close relationship with Jesus, with God, makes it so much easier. It makes you be able to come up to him and just pray. Just, look, God, I need your help. Or look, God, I messed up. And that's what salvation helps you recognize it makes you. Um, I got uh, one more question before I get into the main scripture real quick. I already asked that question. All right. Uh, so actually, no. With, uh, with being saved, does that mean you can do anything you want? They said no, what about your, how do y'all feel? No? Yes, no? With being said, with being said, does that mean you do anything you want? Uh, no. No, okay, good. Because yeah. we, still, we still serve, right? I mean, it's nothing like telling somebody, I love you. Like, tell, say you get a significant other, tell I love you, and turn around and go cheat on you. You really love me? You really love me? Or are you just saying that just to say that? So uh, we're going to get in the main scripture. Actually, I'm going to wait for the soldiers. I not here yet, so I'm going to try to stall it a little bit. Uh, so with that being said, um, how, do you, how do you become saved? Or how do you, how would you, yeah, how would you become saved? What, what, what is the prerequisite you said? Believe. 
Y'all should know this one. I know, I know y'all know this one too. Anybody? Oh man, y'all been y'all telling me y'all don't know how to become sick? We're just gonna be talking. I'm about to start, start, start getting candy or something. <laughs> I have, if I had cash, I would start giving y'all cash at this point. I ain't trying to break it. I don't know. I just look at it crazy. I don't know. So what's the question again? How do you become saved? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Y'all know the verse too. I mean, y'all know the easiest. It's probably the first verse I know. Our first, you know, come on. John 3, 16. Anybody yeah, know? Thank you. Thank you. Um, you have faith in Christ Jesus to be saved. Okay, that's, that's pretty much it. What she said, I mean, that's not exactly the words, but that's the broken down word. You know, as long as you confess with your uh, as long as you believe that Christ Jesus, God gave his only son to come down here and die for our sins, and you confess that with your mouth, with your heart, and your mind, you come truly saved. Uh, so I want to pull up uh, uh, the main scripture, John, uh, 1 John, chapter 1, verse 1. This is, a, this is the message we heard from Jesus. And now I'll declare to you, God is the light, and there is no darkness in him at all. So we, uh, we're lying when we say we have fellowship with God, but though I'm living in spiritual darkness, we are not practicing the truth. So, in this scripture right here, it speaks volumes, because uh, I told this story for me personally multiple times. There was only one time that I had somebody ask, uh, tell me, or act surprised when I figured out I was a Christian. They're like, what, you're a Christian? That only happened to me once. Being a Christian, being saved, being, uh, having that good relationship with God means you, you're the image. You're pretty much putting his image on there. You're representing God, just like your last name, since your last name. If you go out there acting like a fool and stuff, people are like, oh, so-and-so. It happens a lot in school when you have siblings, but oh, you so and so sibling, and you're like, what's that supposed to mean? Is that a bad thing, a good thing? Because that name it already puts a prerequisite on you. So you going around saying I'm Christian, I'm Christian, but I'm over here stealing from them. I'm over here beating up on them. I'm over here cheating on my spouse. I'm over here doing all these crazy things. What does that make Christianity look like? Because I mean, keep it. Keep it real with y'all right now. United States, a lot of the United States does not like Christians right now. There's a lot of things that people just really don't like Christianity. It's really hard to it's really hard to stay Christian right now. Or it's not the hardest thing ever been because it's always been hard to be Christian. But right now, it's really hard to express that to people in fear of what people think of. So, but you still have to stay strong. Recognize you. We're representing God. If we're walking in the darkness. Do we really truly love him? Do we really truly believe that he knew everything he did for us? If you don't turn around smack me in the face, I mean, I know I want to, I want to, like, it's like, I want to, like, I don't ever smack my dad. I don't ever hit my dad. I, I, I don't want to mess with that. Even if I was stronger, even, even stronger, bigger, whatever, I would never do that because I have respect for him. I love him. I sometimes he may make me upset, but I won't do nothing to disrespect him. I recognize who he is now. And this is God we're talking about. God who created everything. God is letting y'all breathe right now. If he really wanted to, he's like, I'm tired of earth or whatever. Gone. Or make it painful. And doing that makes it sound nice. Or he can just say, you know, you don't want y'all to all just suffer. Just pain. Just like that. But he loves us when he gives us a second chance. Uh, so that's why it's always important to go around and express and show, like, I'm a Christian. Stay firm. It's hard to stay firm. Hard, especially with the fasting. I mean, I can, everybody heard, uh, pretty much er, er, all y'all heard me here that will be late. All y'all know. I know some of y'all have different, some of y'all might have different feelings about it. And it was hard for me. It was hard because I had a lot of friends, you know, say certain things. And I'm like, look, as a Christian, this is how I feel about it. I can see, I can see where the world's coming from. Y'all looking from the world view. But as a Christian, God says it's wrong. I mean, wrong is wrong. I can't, I can't not, because that's what I believe in. And I'm stay firm in it. I'll tell them that. It's like, look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bash you, I'm not gonna hate you for this. I can see what you're saying. I know, I understand, but this is what I believe in. I'm not saying like I, it's the same thing with uh, the, you know, 
Probably going to talk to me. Same thing with that. It's like, look, this is why I believe in. I don't do this. I don't recognize it as a good thing. I don't recognize it as a thing you should be. I will still look at you as a normal person, as an individual. I won't see you as what you, as you proclaim yourself. I see you as, as what God intended, what God has it to be. It's not what God intended, it's what God has us to be. It's no intention, it's He has us there. That's what we are. No matter how we feel, that's what we are. It's like you can, you can, you can fold a paper uh, airplane and be like it's a frog, but no, it's an airplane. No matter how that paper feels, it's going to be what you made. So um, it's it's really hard, but you have to stand true to that. Because then a lot of people are like, well, Christianity says this, but I'm seeing X, Y, Z do this. Why should I believe? Why should I believe? Why, why, why should I listen to somebody who's doing all this craziness? Why should I believe that Christianity supports that? It's like, I have to listen to people who's like, oh, don't drink and drive. And then they can go there and accident drinking and driving. It's like, okay, yeah, cool, I can see why not to drink and drive, but how you, you're, you're going to take the word for less. So uh, the next scripture is going to be 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. Uh, he himself is a sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of the world. Let me read that again. Or let me read one spot, part of it. He himself is the sacrifice that comes from our sins. You notice it didn't say, you notice it didn't say, uh, my mom and dad, you know, my mom and dad were the ones, you know, they helped me and they got rid of my sins. You know, it didn't say, Billy Bo or my best friend over here said, you know, he's going to help me. It said he himself. And they're talking about Jesus Christ in this one. He himself. He's the only way to be saved, you know, Get in the family of Christianity. Get saved. Get love. Uh, it, it's, it's really hard. It's not even hard to describe. It's like once, you, honestly, why I say this: once you become saved, once you give your life to God, once you give your life, you feel it. You, your life changes. Everything around you starts to. You, you start to think different. Everything in your life starts to turn different. And then the more things you do in the Bible to help you, you start to recognize, like, oh my goodness, the prom everything you're saying, the promises you say. You love me, say. The way if I feel if I ever feel bogged down, the way I ever feel like stressed out, I'm like, look, God, I need you. It's not me. And then when he comes through, he just takes it, just takes you over. And then it's like you you, you realize like, man, it's not me doing it. It's like you just sitting there just watching him do it for me. So that's why it's very important to recognize, you know. He's the way. That's why when you go tell your friends this, I'm Christian over the walk, you know, you literally you can just simple things like this, it's great. I ride a motorcycle. Y'all most of y'all know. I just got a motorcycle accident two months ago. People are always asking me, oh, so you don't motorcycles now, right? You don't motorcycles. They're scary, man. You can die. You can die. It's terrible. Scary. And I use that opportunity to spread my faith. It's like, look, I recognize, yeah, motorcycles are dangerous. They're scary. A lot of people don't like me riding. But I know. My family knows. We know. We believe. Them. We know if, if so God helped me. If anything happened to me, if I ever died in a motorcycle or died in a I know where I'm going. My family knows where I'm going. My family knows what I believe in. And that gives us all comfort. We all ride ourselves up in the house. And we all recognize that they're dangerous. But we also recognize we can use this opportunity to spread the gospel just like that. Because look, if I pass on, if I, if I lose her, I know I'm going to be in a better spot than here. I know that my family, they'd be okay with me because they know where I'm going. And if you don't know, let me tell you about what I know about this. You can do simple things like that. Well, but the faith, tell them, look, I believe in Jesus Christ and die for my sins. I fully confess my heart, my mind, my body, everything. And they might be like, okay, you're crazy, whatever, walk away. But boom, you just planted a seed on them and they might think about that. Or you can plant a seed and they be like, kind of want to know more, it's kind of cool that you're not worried about that. It's kind of brave of you, it's kind of bold of you to not worry about what happens if I don't make it. What happens if I don't? What, what, what happened? God got to my back. God got to my back. I know I'm going to bed. I know I'm going to go and turn myself. Always tell the story. Always have to spread the word with anybody every chance you get. It's hard. It's hard at first. It really is because it's really awkward. It's just like talking to people you don't really know. You're going somewhere and it's like, 
you have, you have to go with someone with your friend. This happened to me a couple of times. Go somewhere with a friend, like a party or something like that, and a friend has to go somewhere. He has to get. And I'm in a room full of people I do not know. I'm just like, man, this is kind of awkward. And you have to, you know, initially break up and get into the conversation to make it, you know, feel more welcoming. That's what it's like. It's really hard. You can't just go around. It's not. I don't know anybody in this room. Ms. Arthur, Ms. Pat, Kiana, any of y'all can say something. Is it really easy to just go out there and spread the word necessarily? Is it ever just like, oh, hear me, hear me, and everybody come up to you and be like, oh, look, this is real nice. Yeah, this is fair. Listen to you. Man, you get people cussing out. You get people look at you crazy. You get people just do everything to you, but you just got to recognize what you're doing for, what you're standing for. It doesn't matter what they think. You would never see them in the end. You may see them again. They might come up to the church. Who knows? You would never see them again, though. But you did your job. You did what God said. It's the same thing with tithing. Tithing right there, I mean, that's nothing about what's. He has a problem. You know, as long as you tithe, he will bless you with that. A lot of people are like, it's my money. I want it now. Nobody gave my money. Church ain't getting my money. I need my money for my bills. I ain't going to make it. You'll be surprised. You'll be so surprised. If money just falls on your lap with time, with time. It's, there's, my, my parents told me all the time, and it happened to me before too. I, had, I was trying to, what was I trying to pay off? I, I, was, I think it was my car. I was like, I can either pay off my car, or I can tie and just wait another month. So I decided to wait another month and tie. And doing that, our job rang in me out the blue to say, here, everybody's getting this X amount for a bonus. As soon as I made it, it was like the next day after I just tied. Next day after I made that decision, it would not happen. I was able to pay off my car that month. I was so happy. And just simple things like that, it just shows that he would truly bless me and make sure you're okay. He's not gonna, he's not gonna curse you, he's not gonna do anything evil to you. He won't do anything evil to you directly if you don't do certain things. But he warns us all the time that X, Y, and Z may happen. X, Y, and Z, you open the doors for this to happen to you. And he always lets you know, I'm here. I'm here before you come back. That's why you hear a lot of people, uh, especially young people, it's kind of sad, you know, mainly our age. You know, once you get out your mom and dad's house, go to college, get your own life, you're no longer forced to go to church, you're no longer forced to believe what they believe, you're no longer forced to do this. And you go out in the world doing all crazy things. You're thinking you're having fun at the time. And then you look back at it 10, 30 years later, and you're like, oh, wow. What have I done in my life? Oh wow, I really, I'm in this spot right here that if I would've just done my parents would told it. Cause it, I don't know what y'all, a lot of times when you see baptism and stuff, you always see a lot of coming back into Christ baptism, that makes any sense. A lot of people coming back, getting re-baptized, a lot of people recognize like, man, I thought I can get away with it, I thought I knew what I was doing, but I should've listened, and should've got more of my word. I should've been more focused on that versus me going out and have fun. It's like, I, they, and it's worse, they know the word, they know what's gonna happen, they know these things, but they still kind of just like, you know, I'm a little tired, I don't feel like going to church this Sunday, and then it goes to the next Sunday, I'm a little tired, you know, God knows my interest, I'm a little tired, I don't feel like reading my Bible this morning, I'm a little tired, I don't feel like praying before I eat this meal, I'm a little tired, I don't want to smile anymore. It's, it's, really, it's really important to recognize like how much I love you. How much of that, that promise or that promise of him saying, as long as you believe in my son who died for you, you'll be free. That's that's not including the biggest part of it. I mean, y'all know what heaven and hell is, right? Simple as this. You don't believe in him, you don't you don't believe this, you're going to heaven. Sound brutal what I'm saying? You have, to, you have to be honest with you. It's the easiest way, the only way I can understand it. Believe him, you're going to heaven. And, and it's for eternity, though. It's eternity. I don't know y'all know how long eternity is, but that's a long time. I heard this analogy from Pastor all the time. You can get every piece of grain of dirt, gravel, sand on this earth, and stack it up in a pot. Every 10 million years, a bird comes by and takes one grain each time. Every 10 million years, one grain. One grain. And once you enter the out all the grains off of earth, you haven't even spent a moment. Not even a moment in eternity. And that's that's a number that we can't even quantify right now. <laughs> that was, 
So that, that's the importance of it, and being able to spread the word with your friends so they don't have to worry about something. Because that's, it's, when you read it and listen about it, it's just super, just like, think about it. Separated from God, separated from your creator. It's like seeing y'all being separated from your parents. Like, as a young kid, you're five years old, parents leave, you're by yourself. You have to fend for yourself. You have to, and then, and honestly, this is, we can talk about this on earth, honestly. Not really being God and stuff like that. It's like going out, I mean, in your 20s or 18, high school, doing what you want. It's like going out with your parents. No protection. Nobody there to fall back to. Or you think there's nobody there to fall back to. Because he's always going to be there for you to fall back to. You have to take all this stuff on yourself. You have to figure it out yourself. And you may think you're doing it by yourself. But some, and people who do somehow seem like succeed, they think they did it by themselves. They really didn't. Because God has a plan for them. God has opened a door for them to get in there. And a lot of times they realize, oh no, I messed up. And a lot of people like to say the Bible is not true. How, you, how, can you, how can you trust the Bible? How can you trust the book that a man wrote? How can you trust the book that people could have just changed up? And I love this question. Because I always tell them, how do you trust your history books? And a lot of them are like, well, it's credible, da 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 da. I was like, go look. I was like, if you do intense research in the Roman, in the Roman uh, history book, let me know what you see about Jesus Christ. Let me know when you hear a lot of those same stories. Let me know when you hear about crucifixions. Let me know when you hear about this stuff and how you feel about it. Because they, if people don't believe that Jesus Christ was a real person, that's just mind blowing. If they don't believe what he did. Okay, I can understand that. Because if you read the Bible, it sounds like the man going around with superpowers doing all these crazy things. But the fact that people like the bash in the Bible say it's not real is like, man, you believe in all this other stuff. And you get the same stuff you got this information for in the Bible. You, go, you can go back way back to the Old Testament. Way back to the Old Testament with Moses being uh, Moses and Joseph being all in Egypt. You go back to ancient Egypt history. Egyptian history. There's no, I don't know about y'all, these are two big empires at this time. The third, only time they're the biggest empires in the world. One empire is going to have something in the history saying, oh, we lost a, a whole bunch of slaves left and our king died by drowning. And then he goes to the Bible and says pretty much the exact same thing in detail. I, it's like, y'all get y'all history, y'all get your science from these people, but y'all want to cherry pick the Bible stuff out. But then as Christians, we can't cherry pick the Bible either. So I mean, that's one thing. A lot of people think we're hypocrites. <clears throat> and I've been thinking a lot of us, honestly, I will say this, a lot of Christians can be hypocrites. They could cherry pick the Bible. They're like, well, if I do this, I don't believe that. You know, all sins are equal. God got my back. You can't do that. It goes back to uh, 1 John chapter 1, talking about we are the light. All right, he is the light. We're representing that light. There's no darkness in him. And the moment we show that darkness, people are like, you're not him. Granted, we're not going to but we're supposed to be you know, protecting it. So that's what is the, the importance of knowing, like, being saved, what, what it means to be Christian, what it means to be saved, what does it mean to believe, what does it mean to show what you believe. And I just gave out, and I gave out a couple of tips, a couple of, like, just simple things I can tell people if they try to throw you off. Simple things. But uh, that's pretty much all I have for y'all today, though. So I'm going to go ahead and pray it out. Now, Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for everything you provided. I thank you for having these kids up here, Lord. Even though they, they may be quiet, Lord, I pray that you're able to understand the message, huh? that they're able to take it home, Lord, and share the good news with you, Lord. And I just pray that you all have a great week, even though it's hot, oh Lord, even though it's really hot, but it's nowhere as hot as it you, Lord, it without you, without me believing in you, Lord, in eternity. And I thank you for everything you gave us. In Jesus' name, amen. Can't show the truth with it.